Sun Tzu said, Earth signifies distance, terrain, expansiveness, narrowness, life, and death. He referred to the distance between battlefield positions, the height and difficulty of terrain, and whether it was safe or dangerous. Different terrains correspond to different tactical strategies on the battlefield. Let's take Napoleon as an example. He was a master of land warfare but struggled with naval battles. He was nearly invincible on the European continent. However, when he gazed upon the English Channel and looked towards the northern shores of Britain, he let out a deep sigh. On August 2, 1806, he famously remarked, if I were given six hours to conquer the world, I would spend the first four planning the invasion and the last two crossing the English Channel. Unfortunately, fate did not grant him that opportunity, and he never conquered England. Despite considering Britain as his enemy and attempting to blockade the country, his actions inadvertently facilitated secret trade between Russia and Britain. Consequently, he believed that capturing Moscow was the ultimate means to defeat England. However, this decision led to the decline of the Napoleonic Empire, with terrain being one of the contributing factors. This example highlights the significance of terrain in warfare. We cannot underestimate its importance, as different terrain conditions can heavily influence the outcome of a battle. Therefore, it is essential for us to skillfully utilize the terrain, strategically choosing favorable battlefield positions in order to achieve victory. Sun Tzu mentioned six types of terrains in his chapter on terrain, there are accessible terrains, entangling terrains, temporizing terrains, narrow passes, dangerous terrains, and distant terrains. Accessible terrain refers to terrain that is advantageous for both our own forces and the enemy. In such terrain, we can fully utilize our advantages while remaining cautious of the enemy's potential exploitation. Entangling terrain refers to terrain that is easy to enter but difficult to withdraw from. For our own forces, this type of terrain can be a trap, requiring careful handling. Temporizing terrain refers to terrain that is unfavorable for both sides, potentially restricting their movements and strategic choices. In such terrain, we need to seek out other advantageous points. Narrow terrain refers to terrain that is difficult to breach, like a narrow passage where one man can defend against 10,000. This type of terrain easily forms choke points and becomes strategically important. Dangerous terrain refers to terrain surrounded by mountains, providing opportunities for ambushes. In such terrain, both sides need to act with caution to avoid falling into the enemy's ambush. Distant terrain refers to terrain where both sides are considerably far apart. In such terrain, strategic actions require even greater caution, considering factors such as supply lines and transportation of resources. Understanding these terrain features provides vital reference for strategic decision-making. Sun Tzu further states, terrain is the key to the assistive elements of warfare. Those who understand and employ terrain will be victorious, while those who do not will be defeated. This means that terrain is the most important auxiliary factor in warfare. Understanding the enemy's situation, formulating winning strategies, and considering the risks, obstacles, and distances of the terrain are the responsibilities of commanders. The side that comprehends these principles and guides their actions accordingly will inevitably achieve victory, while the side that lacks this understanding and directs their operations will inevitably fail. Sun Tzu's strategic principles of geography are equally applicable to the business environment in real life. In business, the ultimate destination of products and services is the customers, so that the terrain, in real life represents the market. The proximity of products to consumers' desires determines the proximity of the terrain. If consumers cannot accept the product, they will not make a purchase, resulting in a failure to generate profits. The quality of the product determines not only the product's fate but also the survival of the entire enterprise. 
In a shopping mall, the size of a store and the flow of people determine the store's visibility. Business owners tend to choose busy and bustling locations to open their stores because it is more conducive to doing business, while less populated areas are not suitable for operations. This reflects the broad and narrow aspects of the terrain, where a vast market space and a busy commercial area are crucial to the success of the business. By applying the strategic principles of terrain from Sun Tzu's Art of War, we can better understand and apply the geographical elements in the business environment, thereby enhancing the competitiveness and market performance of the enterprise. Lastly, let's talk about the concept of commander, which represents talent in Sun Tzu's Art of War. Sun Tzu attached great importance to the selection of commanders. I will discuss this topic separately in another video, as it is beyond the scope of this one. Method, on the other hand, is another key concept. Whether in ancient or modern times, a strictly enforced system of laws and regulations is crucial for both the military and the state. Sun Tzu also emphasized the importance of strategic implementation of laws and regulations. He believed that whether both sides strictly adhere to the laws, whether soldiers have received sufficient training, and whether rewards and punishments are just and strict can roughly determine the outcome of the conflict. In modern society, we can also derive insights about method from Sun Tzu's The Art of War. A clear system of laws and regulations and their strict enforcement are equally crucial for the growth and success of organizations, teams, and individuals. The role of laws and regulations extends beyond warfare and plays an important role in other fields such as business, politics, and law. Through timely reward and punishment mechanisms and fair disciplinary systems, we can maintain organizational order, stimulate a sense of responsibility and motivation in individuals, and thereby achieve better outcomes. Sun Tzu said, by method and discipline are to be understood the marshalling of the army in its proper subdivisions, the graduations of rank among the officers, the maintenance of roads by which supplies may reach the army, and the control of military expenditure. In the military, maintaining disciplined and strict adherence to orders is essential to achieve victory in warfare. The discipline and laws within the military must be rigorous, as it is a high-risk environment. However, formulating excellent systems and laws is only the first step, the most critical aspect is ensuring the effective execution of these systems. Without people to execute the systems, they become ineffective. It's like having the water temperature reach 99 degrees but not boiling, and it's only when you turn up the heat to 100 degrees that the water boils. Formulating systems is only the first 99 degrees, the true effectiveness lies in execution. Only by executing the systems can they truly fulfill their purpose. Therefore, in real life, not only the military but any organization needs to establish comprehensive systems and regulations, and ensure strict adherence to them. Designing the systems is just the first step, the real key lies in execution. Only by implementing the systems into the actions of every member can they effectively function, ensuring the smooth operation and successful development of the organization. The time for the video is also coming to an end. Thank you very much for watching today's video. In this episode, we explored two important concepts from Sun Tzu's Art of War, Earth and Method. We learned that terrain plays a significant role in both warfare and real-life market competition, while the execution of laws and regulations is critical in both military conflicts and organizational settings. If you're interested in Sun Tzu's art of war and military strategy, and want to learn more about related topics, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to receive timely updates. In the next video, I will continue to delve into another important theme from the art of war, the concept of commander within the five factors, which involves talent selection and management. Stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, feedback, or topics you'd like to discuss, please share them in the comments section. Thank you for your support, 
and I'll see you in the next episode.